Well, good morning and welcome to this Sunday service at Kirkland Village and Abroad. This morning we're going to take a look at the Gospel of John, beginning at verse 25, and we're going to take a look at the theme, the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life. Too often we are doubtful of things such as the resurrection, and so were many in the early world until the time of Jesus Christ, when that doubt was put to rest for so many. And we're going to take a look at some of the passages here this morning that seem to open up to us the idea of the resurrection. But before we do that, let us open with a word of prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. Gracious Father, we do thank you for the time and the opportunity you've given to each of us to attend this lesson and this service this morning. We pray that you would prepare our hearts, that we might receive your word, and not just receive it, but live it out in our lives. Lord, give us the hope that we all should have in the resurrection from the dead. And Lord, you are truly the giver of life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. So we're going to begin at verse 17 of chapter 11 in the Gospel of John this morning. And I'm going to read to verse 27. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days, speaking of Lazarus. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. The reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. So what do we see happening here in this passage? I guess it's the age-old question, is there life after death? Is there truly life after death? It's a question that has been asked by men from the beginning. In one of the oldest books of literature, the book of Job, at the news of the death of his ten children in a very tragic accident, Job asked a question. If a man dies, will he live again? There was no definite, definitive answer given to Job. Just a hope. But Job did say this. I know that my Redeemer lives and shall stand in the last days upon the earth. And though the worms destroy this body in my flesh, I shall see God. So you could see that Job had a definite hope of the resurrection from the dead. Now there is really, is not much teaching on the subject in the Old Testament. I'll give you a few passages. Daniel, the prophet, he said, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. David, the prophet in Psalm 22, declared, 
and they shall go down in the dust and shall bow before him. In Psalm 23, David spoke of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Not in the valley. At the end of the psalm, he declared, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in Psalm 49, David said, God shall redeem my soul from the power of the grave. We can go back to Isaiah, who's, who was a prophet, 900 years before the birth of Christ, who often quoted many, many messianic prophecies of the Messiah. Isaiah in 26, 19 says, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my body shall they arise. Awake and sing you that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Hosea chapter 13 verse 14 says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. <clears throat> Even though we hear these verses, there's not much upon which to base a doctrine of resurrection. You know, it was in the age of philosophy that was born some of the greatest minds of men, and they were engaged in a search for the meaning of life and the possibility of life after death. And the philosophers actually found no adequate answer for man. What it took was the coming of Jesus to bring us insight and knowledge of this thing we call the resurrection. The age of philosophy was dying when the story before us took place. Two sisters, Mary, Martha, they lived in Bethany with their brother Lazarus, and he was dying. They believed in Jesus, and they had a close relationship with him. And so the sisters sent an urgent message to come quickly, for his friend Lazarus was very sick. Now we know from the story that we just read, how that Jesus did not immediately respond to their appeal, but remained here at Jordan a couple days before beginning the two-day journey to Bethany. By the time Jesus had finally arrived, his friend was dead and had been buried four days earlier. There were mourners there with the sisters in their home when word came that Jesus was approaching the village and coming up from Jericho. Martha left the other mourners and rushed down the road toward Jesus. And when she came to him, she said, almost in an accusing way, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. It was like saying, what took you so long? Where were you when we needed you? She then said, I know that even now, whatsoever you ask God, he will give it to you. You think she's possibly suggesting that Jesus raise him from the dead? <laughs> Seems so. Yet later, when Jesus told them to roll the stone away from the entry of Lazarus' tomb, it was Martha who objected, declaring that his body would be smelly by now, after four days. Jesus said to her, Martha, your brother will live again. And she answered, yes, Lord, I know, in the resurrection at the last days. It was here that Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Now here's a straightforward, clear answer to the question of life after death. Nothing obscure in that statement. There are two scriptural definitions for death. 
Let me give those to you. The first scriptural definition for death, okay, is the separation of man's consciousness from his body. The spirit leaves the body. In the scripture, we call it, and he gave up the ghost. He gave up the spirit. Then there's the separation of man's consciousness from God. That's another type of death. One is man's consciousness leaving his spirit, leaving his body. But another type of death is a spirit separating itself from God. Obviously, Jesus was referring to the second definition. If you live and believe in him, you will never be separated from God. This is the truth of the gospel. Do you believe in him? This is what he said. I mean, it's a radical claim that's been made by Jesus. One that demands a decision. Either you believe it or you don't. Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? The question is, do you believe that I can do what I'm saying? And Martha answered, in the affirmative. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. It's now up to Jesus to prove that claim, isn't it? And so he went to the grave of Lazarus and he commanded that the stone be rolled away from the entrance to the cave. And then he called out to Lazarus to come out. Lazarus, come out. What a dramatic moment. I mean, if nothing happens, then Jesus is a fraud. And everyone will know it. Then he has made all these fraudulent claims and he's deceived the people. Wait a minute. Don't leave yet. Here comes Lazarus. Hopping out of the cave, all bound up in grave clothes. This means because he truly did raise him from the dead that we have a serious, serious consideration to make about the claims of Jesus, don't we? No man can do what he just did. Interesting to see what is going on here how our Lord has totally conquered death and raised up Lazarus you see what does the Bible teach about life after death well let's think about this for a minute it teaches that the real you is body and soul your body is also a type of a medium by which your spirit expresses itself, which is why they work together. Your body's like a well-designed machine, if we can put it that way. A well-designed machine that is continuing here to, to propagate and grow and to live. Much like the engine in your car that needs the oxygen, the fuel, the cooling system, and the exhaust to keep it running. Your body needs oxygen to fuel the cells. The whole marvelous design of the lungs and the heart and the blood distribute, the way it is distributed through your system, bringing the oxygen to all the cells in your body. Your body needs moisture to keep it cool because the cells are burning up so much energy. It needs food to nourish the cells so the design of the mouth, teeth, stomach and all the acids and chemicals to dissolve the food into the basic chemicals to be carried into the body to feed the cells again. 
It needs to dispose of waste materials and the marvelous design of the bowels and the bladder. And it needs the opposite sex, the body, to perpetuate the race. Now these needs all make their demand on us in the form of drives, natural inclinations and body drives, right? But man is way more than just a machine. And that is what we need to see. Way more than just a machine. He has a consciousness. The capacity to think and to know to analyze and to choose. The lower side of man's nature is the body, the mechanics of the body, the various bodily drives. The higher side of man's nature is the spirit, the capacity to know and understand and to worship the one who created the body with all of its marvelous capabilities. Now man can choose to live after the lower or the higher side of his nature. He can live after the flesh or he can live after the spirit. To live after the flesh is spiritual death. The separation of the consciousness from God. To do this is to live life purely on the mechanical level. You go through the motions, but you actually abide in death. Your mind is controlled by the body needs and thinks basically on the things of the flesh, which are temporal and will perish. The result is worry, anxiety, lust, strife, and envy. But to live after the spirit is to live in fellowship with God, the creator. And your mind is on him and the things that are eternal. The result is life, joy, and peace. Now to the one that lives and believes in Jesus Christ, just as he said to Martha, there is life after death. It is eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, you really do not die. But you only move out of this body into heaven with the Lord Jesus. And eventually, when you are reunited again with this body, you will be resurrected with a new and improved body. One that Jesus has prepared for you. In my father's house are many mansions, he said. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now for those who do not believe in Jesus, there is death after death. Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. 
and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was also cast into the lake of fire. <clears throat> Beloved, there is a death that separates us from God. And there is also a spiritual life that draws us close to God. And I guess the question for each and every one of us today is the question that Jesus asked Martha. I am the resurrection and the life, he says. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Mary, Martha, do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Do you believe this, beloved? It really is a question of, Life or death. Eternal life. Or eternal death. That's why he asked Martha. That's why he stated it the way he did. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. Whoever believes in me will never die. I pray this morning that we would believe in him whom God sent. Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, it is so hard to walk by faith in this world. So many things we want to trust and believe that can only be proven or that we can see, touch, taste, or smell. And yet when we are told of your promises, it is hard for us to truly grasp them and trust you. And yet, like Martha, may we be with our answer to you. Do we believe this? Yes. For you are the Christ sent into the world. Lord, we believe you. And we ask that you would confirm that in our hearts this morning. That we too might have everlasting life is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the benediction. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless each of you, and have a wonderful week.